Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be looking closer at enhancing our AI. So we are actually able to do something in these two different states now, these behavior trees that we have. <clears throat> so something can happen and we can transition between them. So going into our AI folder, we can open up our behavior tree for attack. And currently we do not have anything in here at all. Um, so what we can do here is this is supposed to be whatever we're doing when we're in the attacking state. Uh, so to start off, we can choose a selector so we have uh, some choices we can make for a character. And we can say that our least desired thing would be a wait, just so we have something happening here. We can say the wait should be like three seconds or something. And then what we want to do here is, is something else. Uh, and this we will use as sort of a... Um, situation when, when the AI decides that it no longer wants to attack us, like for example if it has lost sight of us. So here we can add a sequence um, and on this one we can just do something simple. We can uh, create a task um, that says uh, change AI state. Now we don't have a a task for this yet so we can create a new task and we'll choose the bt task blueprint base to inherit from and <clears throat> inside of this one we will keep it really simple we wait oh, 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 oh sorry there no we want to go here we want to rename this task first um, btt change ai states that's descriptive and good i like it so inside of here, <clears throat> we will override our uh, execute AI function again. And we created in the last episode a blueprint uh, in interface so that we can easily change states. So now we can say um, change states, the message here, you can see. So we can just send, even though we don't uh, know uh, we did implement this, right? I need to double check here. <clears throat> we did not implement it here. Uh, oh, I'm on the AI character. The AI controller, of course, is the one that has it. Yes. So here we can see class defaults. We have a change state, which is this event over here. And then we change depending on which state we are currently uh, receiving here. So. Uh, going back to our task now, we can say then that uh, we want to change this state here. And something nifty we can do then is we can just create a variable here saying um, new AI state and make this of the type e AI state, the enumerator we created. And now we want to make it instance editable, which means that it's available to see from the outside. And we can say that we want this AI state to be driving this um, call. After that we can just say finish execute. Okay and we'll say success also that's important. So now we're getting a event execute in this case where we're if we go back to our attacking now we can say uh, change AI state, so we have a nice task for it. And the handy thing now is that we can choose just from a drop down here what we want to change um, state to uh, based on this. So in this case here, we can see this as the situation where um, we have lost sight of our uh, targets and then we want to change back to roaming state, for example. So we can have this as set as roaming and then that should call on the AI controller, which will then get the new AI state, which will say roaming, and then it will go back to behavior tree of uh, roaming, or basic as we have called it currently. Okay, so we might want to condition this a little bit because currently it's just going to be doing this. Uh, it's, the selector is gonna say, say, I want to do whatever highest priority thing I can do, and it will go to the sequence, which will go through all of its tasks, and it only has one task right now. So it will do this and it will complete. So we will never get to this wait part here, essentially. So we might want to put in some criteria for this. So what we could do is we could add a decorator. So we right click on the sequence, we say add decorator. 
and we can say we want to check uh, blackboard is it i think right so uh, here we can say uh, we want to notify observer on value change or on result change and we can just say uh, value change here for this and we can say that we also want to abort things if something's happening so if we're currently doing this and the condition that's required over here changes uh, then we uh, abort all the lower priority things which got marked as uh, blue here now uh, because lower priority is to the right and then we can say that what we actually want to check against is to see if player target is not set so if player target is not set we will go in here which means we will go back to roaming okay so to have this actually do something we actually need to make some changes to our other behavior tree as well because that one doesn't actually transition into attacking currently it just has this sequence of uh, roaming around essentially so we need to have some functionality here as well um, and what we can do here is something similar we can first of all we can disconnect this one and add a, a selector here as well so that it will try to do its most highest priority thing so we can have this as our fallback to go roaming but if we can we can have our situation here where we want to um, engage the player so going to our attacking uh, behavior tree we can just copy this i believe this works and then going back to our baby trip basic and we paste and that seemed to work fine so we just hook that up like so the problem here now is that this one says uh, we should go in here when player is not set however that's not true in this case we're doing the opposite because here we want to go into first of all attacking mode so we'll change from roaming to attacking and then we change the blackboard based condition here from player is not set to player is set so if we have a player target meaning the this variable is set over here then we will go into attacking mode and in the attacking state we will if we lose it at some point go back to roaming state so this should be enough now for us to demonstrate this so uh, our character right now here we have the character over there uh, in the background he's running around roaming he doesn't care about anything because he hasn't seen us and then he still does not care. Okay, so let's see what that is. Uh, we can first do... He seems to have stopped at least, so that's something. So he probably do recognize us. Uh, we go here, press apostrophe, and now we get this debug data. And we can see that... Let's enhance this a bit. Um, we can see... Uh, let's see here. The Blackboard basic it has us uh, set as the third person character. So we are the set target and uh, in here we can also see that uh, over here is where you see that that information where i'm holding my mouse um, and in addition to that we can also see that the active task here is in the behavior tree uh, for attacking and the weight section so this is the the weight that's going on over here so to demonstrate this further we can do this have this up at the same time and now we can see what it's uh, this information represents how it's polling over here so we can see that it goes over here and see it says that uh, play target is not set so it's going into its weights all the time and just keeps doing that because it's always uh, set however if we now move out of its range so it doesn't see us we probably don't have any code for that yet so it's still keeping the the target off us so we need to go to our character and make sure that it actually updates um, its, its player target as the situation changes. So if you remember from earlier, we have this situation here where we're checking against if we were successfully sensed, and in that case, we're actually adding the player target object over here to our blackboard. And now we can at least temporarily put this information here on the false as well, but having the object set to uh, void or null or blank. Uh, meaning that now we should actually be seeing some more interesting information here or interesting behavior so we check the character over here we press apostrophe we can see that it's currently running around in uh, roaming mode and we can also he is hiding from me so we go out over here 
he doesn't have a player target right now, we run up in front of him, we can see that he now has us as target, which means he will now um, just be going through the weight, but if we break line of sight here, he goes back to having not uh, as not as target anymore and he goes back to his roaming state essentially. So now we have the transition working at least between these two different states of attacking and um, just roaming even though we're currently not doing much in the attacking part. So let's make the character at least a little bit more interactive here. So we'll go to our behavior tree for attacking and instead of this weight now we're going to be uh, removing that and we'll add a sequence and we can call this sequence by clicking here. We can change the description to, let's say, attacking. Uh, maybe not sequence as well. We can remove that word. So attacking. So we know what this does. So it becomes a little bit more descriptive. And here we could do something very simple to begin with. We can say uh, move to. And we can say that we want to move to the player target. And the player target will always be set in this case because we have this condition here otherwise. And uh, in addition to that, we may want to have the character actually uh, look at us as well. So we can add a rotate to face blackboard entry. Uh, and then we add player target there as well, like so. And let's have it so that, no, that's fine for now. So let's, let's see how this works now. So if we walk out and our character sees us, he will now start running towards us. He is not running towards us. Right, we have a little bit of a discrepancy right now. Uh, he is doing, let's see if we can see this. He is in his... Uh, yeah, so now he's running towards us, but he had the situation where he was... Oh, let's see if we can... Oh, okay. So now we're, he's having a bit of a, a party with us over here. Uh, let's see if we can break contact with him now by maybe jumping over here, like so. And now he has broken contact and he's back to roaming. Now this isn't ideal, of course, because we may want to have uh, an opponent that doesn't have a memory like a goldfish. Uh, but I think this is okay for now, and we'll get back to sorting that in uh, future episodes. So we will be closing down for now. Hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.